Okay, eh, Amir, um, bienvenidos amigos de Informa BTL. Thanks uh, would be uh, stay with me, Amir, um, Amir, Benjamin, Amir. <laughs> Thank we uh, have this interview in Spanglish, so we can have this interview in Spanglish. Bienvenidos amigos de Informa BTL. Trataremos de tener esta entrevista en Spanglish con Amin. Eh, bienvenido, Amir, a, a, a esta entrevista. Eh, sé que sabes algo de español. Si no, hablaremos en inglés. Siéntete libre de, de comunicarnos en esta entrevista en Spanglish. Trataremos de, de, de hacernos entender como sea. Créeme que estamos en un medio donde la mercadotecnia y los negocios, entiendo que muchas veces... Eh, se habla en un idioma a veces en inglés, en español eso, tú siéntete libre we are in interview with uh, we are in a good hands with uh, the, the audience with, uh, that wants to un understand some topics in English or in Spanish uh, they, they will understand uh, uh, some Spanish uh, words English words so we are uh, interested in, in understand your content Estamos interesados en entender tu contenido, ¿no? Entonces, eh, bienvenido, Mir. Ven, Gracias. Ven. Con gusto. Ok. Eh, a mí, eh, estoy muy interesado en saber qué está pasando con, con el, el mundo de las criptomonedas. Eh, últimamente, pues, eh, los medios... Eh, eh, nos han hecho ver que, que han fluctuado eh, muchísimo las ganancias de diferentes monedas de las criptomonedas. Eh, la verdad es que yo no soy una persona que sepa mucho de ese mundo, tú sí. Entonces, eh, estamos ante una audiencia que, que eh, mucha gente que nos ve en este, med, en este, en este video está en el área de mercadotecnia, de publicidad, de negocios. Entonces, muchos, yo creo que nadie sabe, pocos saben realmente de, de las criptomonedas y tú eres de los pocos que saben. Entonces, antes de empezar esto, me gustaría que nos hablaras de ti, de tu experiencia. ¿Quién es a mí? Who is me? Yo, uh, yo en say... español, en inglés, y yo lo voy sí. a traducir. Como te <risa> Qué bueno, gracias. Sí, uh, yo soy Amin, uh, original de Irán, uh, pero yo vivo para mucho tiempo en Australia, en muchos diferentes países. Uh, esta es la situación para mucha gente. Uh, ¿Quién eres tú? ¿De dónde vienes? ¿Qué estudiaste? ¿Cómo es que llegaste al criptomundo, a las criptomonedas? ¿Cómo es que sabes tanto? Vamos a empezar por ahí, ¿te parece? Sí, uh, sí es para mucha gente. La gente es, es difícil, uh, sabes que es, uh, ¿cómo se dice en español? Criptos, dineros, criptos. Criptomonedas. Uh, monedas, sí, uh, porque es poco técnico, poco no, es muy diferente en comparación a uh, normal, uh, ¿cómo se dice? El dinero. Uh, but my experience began in 2013. Uh, that's when I got involved with it. Cryptos are quite fascinating. Uh, there are over 2,000 uh, different cryptos, uh, each with its own function, each with its own purpose. Uh, so I got involved in 2013 as a way of going beyond the financial system, as I'm sure many of you are aware, or if you're not, The financial system is based on debt, and this is really uh, something that causes a lot of problems. That means for a country to be prosperous, more people need to be in debt. Uh, sometimes people forget this. If you look at the example from 2008, when the financial crash happened, George Bush, back then the head of the most powerful country in the world, uh, his advice to the people was to go shopping. Uh, that was his remedy to how to fix a financial crisis. Now, that's not a very good system because it requires people to be in debt. 
Uh, there is no oversight in how money is printed. So your money, your pesos, dollars, whatever you use becomes devalued the more money is printed. But there's no vote, there's no consensus on this. It just happens and your dollar becomes devalued and unfortunately the buying power of it reduces and the salary of people hasn't kept up to the same rate as the dollar or the peso devaluing. So if you look at, uh, for example, the dollar 100 years ago compared to what it is now, with $1 100 years ago, you could purchase a lot of different things actually. Uh, but today, you know, it's not, it's not much. And uh, that is a problem of printing more money and it not being backed by an asset such as it was before the 1960s or so uh, when it was backed by gold. So we have these sort of problems and these are the problems that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies came to fix. The first uh, property of Bitcoin, because it was the first digital decentralized cryptocurrency uh, you know, out of everything that exists today, was that there can only be 21 million Bitcoins. Now, this was agreed upon when the network started uh, you know, many years ago, more than a decade ago. And this number is fixed. That means you can't have more than 21 million Bitcoins. So you have the reverse effect where the dollar 100 years ago to a dollar today has depreciated in value with Bitcoin uh, since its inception to today, as all of sure a lot of you know, the value of it has gone up because it creates scarcity. So it becomes uh, constantly raro uh, uh, when you compare it to uh, the dollar. This is just one property of it. The other property is the current financial system is highly centralized. So you got the Federal Reserve, you got central banks, uh, European Central Bank, International Monetary Fund, the IMF, and you have all these organizations or institutions that control uh, the policies and regulations around uh, money. Whereas with Bitcoin, it's decentralized, uh, meaning that it's not in the control of one country. So to give you an example, recently, China has done this many different times, but recently China came out and banned, uh, let's say, uh, Bitcoin mining. Mining is uh, the process through which you obtain Bitcoins. I'm not gonna go into the technical aspects of it, though there is a mechanism behind how Bitcoin is produced. And it's based on mathematics, it's based on energy production, and uh, that's what gives it the value that it does beyond the uh, speculation and market control as well. So China banned mining. So to mine Bitcoin now, you need huge warehouses, so very big, large warehouses filled with uh, mining machines uh, that are specifically designed to mine Bitcoin and they use up electricity. So a lot of these mining uh, facilities or warehouses were in China because the electricity was cheaper. So if you're mining something like Bitcoin, it's in your advantage to place yourself somewhere where the electricity is quite cheap. So after China banned it, a lot of people are like, oh, that's going to cause a lot of problems. But what it did, interestingly, is a lot of people actually move to Texas. So that's the decentralized nature of Bitcoin, where if one country is like, no, we don't want it, you move to another location where you're able to continue. And that's the second uh, very valuable property of Bitcoin, which is that it's decentralized. It doesn't belong to any country. And that's quite powerful when compared to the financial system. Uh, should I talk a bit about my background and you know, my experiences and things like that, or how would you like to? Hold, hold me a minute, uh, I mean, uh, I try to resume in Spanish uh, your, your very interesting uh, answer. Uh, el Bitcoin surge como una necesidad de ya no imprimir dinero, digamos. Como una necesidad de libertad, ¿no? De no depender como de que este dinero dependa de los gobiernos o de los bancos centrales, ¿no? 
eh, y que este dinero eh, surgió primero pues como una especie de, de oferta frente al dólar y antes un Bitcoin pues eh, representaba, eh, estaba la paridad un poquito del dólar y ha estado fluctuando no con, con respecto al dólar, ¿no? Básicamente esto fue lo que tú me, eh, me estabas respondiendo, ¿no? Que eso fue un poco eh, a las necesidades a las que respondió lo que es el, el, el Bitcoin hoy y las criptomonedas en general, porque el Bitcoin es una moneda de las, de las criptomonedas, ¿no? Pero la primera. Como, exacto. En, las criptomonedas surgen con respecto a una necesidad de libertad, de ya no de imprimir el dinero, básicamente, y empezaron con... con, con eh, pues con una, te lo digo porque tú entiendes español y quizá la gente que, que quizá no entiende inglés nos pueda, eh, para tratar de, 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 de entender mejor tu respuesta, ¿no? Que fue muy amplia y muy buena. Ahora, háblanos todo, 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 about your, your, your background, your experience at that, uh, de, de, de criptos. Ok. Uh, so, my background uh, started in Uh, 2000 and my background is in engineering engineering design and uh, product engineering and things like that so I can look at a particular uh, let's say technology like Bitcoin and have different uh, perspectives on it from business to design senior uh, engineering uh, uh, architectura the sistema uh, So in 2013, I read the white paper. It's a, it's a document. Uh, it's the technical document that talks about how Bitcoin uh, works. And I was fascinated by this. So I got full-time, I, I became involved full-time and I moved from Australia to Netherlands to be closer, to learn more and to have more experience. And there I worked as a journalist. I worked as a, you know, Uh, whatever I could do to be a part of different projects. So I worked with really well-known projects now, but back then, you know, they were just beginning. Things like storage, things like uh, Wirex and uh, Aave and these, uh, you know, projects that are now very, very big. And it was very fascinating for me to learn all these things. And then I started working as uh, an educator. So I started teaching people, holding workshops, uh, you know, course, courses and uh, educating people on different topics and uh, helping them learn about what cryptos are, how they work, and also became an international speaker going to different conferences around the world. Uh, now I'm working on a decentralized education platform, uh, which is powered by technologies that came from these uh, space, decentralized technologies. And uh, it's to decentralize education. So, you know, I saw the same problem that we have in the uh, financial system that Bitcoin and other cryptos uh, are doing a really good job at uh, providing a solution to. Uh, I'm looking to do the same with the education, which is because it's very centralized, it's very top down. Uh, I would like to disrupt that and reverse the roles between students and their institutions. And uh, that's, that's what I'm doing at the moment. And, uh, you know, uh, for Bitopia, which is the project, uh, Bitopia University, uh, we have two courses at the moment. Uh, we'll be adding a lot more. Uh, we have one course which begins in July and that covers uh, cryptos from very basic level. And if you want more advanced knowledge, we can go there as well. And then we have one on digital privacy Uh, which is, you know, if you own a business or if you're a family person and you want to use certain technologies to uh, protect your uh, information and things that may be confidential and uh, how to go about doing that. So that's kind of like an overview. Muy bien. Ahora, por lo que yo entiendo, eh... The sounds of Mexico, do you hear? <laughs> It's typical sounds of Mexico. That's right. Urban sounds. <laughs> and, and, bueno, ahora lo, lo que yo entendí es que, bueno, te has dedicado básicamente a la formación, eh, primero como en tecnología, después has hecho la parte in, en IT, en tecnología, 
y ahora estás en Bitopia, que es un proyecto de formación, de educación, con base en las criptos, ¿no? Eh, y, y tu formación es de, de tecnología. Eh, please, eh, I, I want to talk with some, someone like you that uh, what happened in, in this crypto world? Uh, I think sometimes we are now in a bubble, in, in, in a kind of bubble of the cryptos. Uh, maybe uh, before the pandemic, uh, the cryptos, they are under value or overvalued sometimes. And now uh, uh, the owner of Tesla, he's a, he's a very, uh, he's, a, he's a, a promoter of cryptos. When he say he, he doesn't buy Twitter, the, the crypto uh, world, the crypto coins, the crypto values going down about 20, 30%. What is happening in, in the crypto world? So that's, Now, that's very, yeah. Sometimes I, 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 two years ago, three years ago, we feel that the value of the cryptos is very, very high. And now they are going down. What do you feel? What, what, what do you think is happening now? See, uh, it's, it's important to ask this question. My involvement has been more from the education side, consulting and development. Uh, so while that's happening since 2013, what you have described has happened probably five different times. You know, you have these peaks and then drops, peaks and drops. What's important is to zoom out and just see in the long range that it's, it's always on, on its way up. So what happens is that There's two ways to look at it. One is that, yes, two years ago or so before the pandemic, we had a peak and then we had a fall when the pandemic. And then after that, we had another peak last year. Uh, so 2021, January, December, January, February, we had another peak. And these all align with, you know, a lot of it is market speculation so a news comes out people get involved they get excited more money comes in uh, what they call uh, you know retail investors retail investors being people uh, just the general population and when the general population like what is called the retail investors get involved they usually get involved when the hype is really exciting when the market is doing really well and then money flows in from you know, the average people at home, the, you know, the average people everywhere. Um, and then when the market has what they call a shakeout, which is they want to get rid of uh, the retail investors, uh, that's what happens. And the first money to leave is the retail investors because uh, there's a lot of fear involved. It's quite complex, the ecosystem. It's filled with fear, with fake news, with uh, people putting propaganda, Uh, sometimes there's scams, uh, so it's is it it's, it's a postmodern currency too. No, it's a it's a postmodern uh, currency. It's a postmodern money, so it's involved in a postmodern uh, uh, world. You know, it's a new yeah. currency in it's involved in this fake news postmodern. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's caught up in the, <laughs> in the turbulence and the, and, the, and the impact that it has. So what you said with Elon Musk, he came out and said, oh, it, you know, you can buy Tesla cars with Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, he kind of like spoke about Bitcoin in a very positive way. And Bitcoin went, you know, really high up um, in price. And then he came out and goes, no, well, the electricity behind Bitcoin isn't very good. And that, which was interesting because to actually make Tesla cars, it's very destructive to the earth to, to mine lithium and electric cars actually are not green at all. They're actually, good point. Very, good point. You know, they're actually very destructive, but somehow people think electric cars are better for the environment, which they're not. 
Um, but anyway, that's what the postmodernism, as you call it, <laughs> contains. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of speculation. Uh, if anyone's looking to get involved, not financial advice, uh, you know, you should only put in what you can. Um, a lot of times people get excited when the market's really high up and then they come in rather than when the market's really low, take that opportunity to come in then. Um, unfortunately, people get excited when things are really happening. So look, the price has gone up and down 100%, 200% over the past you know, 10 years plus. So it's just part of the market. The stock markets have done the same thing and uh, shares right now is very similar. It's just, yeah, what happens. But what is happening now is there's a lot of, uh, advantages to having digital currencies. So in Canada, where they had the protests, a, a lot of people's bank accounts got frozen and people switched to cryptocurrencies because you can't freeze cryptocurrencies, especially if you don't have it on an exchange. So the way cryptocurrencies work is that you become the bank. So if I have my own wallet, uh, let's say, you know, there's, for example, Bitso, which is in Mexico. It's an exchange where you can buy cryptos. You should always take your crypto off the exchange and hold it onto your own, let's say, hardware wallet. Anyway, there's a lot of things you can do to become your own bank. And when you do that, it can't be confiscated from you. Um, so now we're seeing a different application to cryptos, and it's becoming uh, quite useful for a lot of people who fear that there might be a financial crash, people who fear that their assets might be taken away from them, people who fear that the you know, banking system might go through a reset and how that would impact their deposit and saved money. So people are looking for alternative ways to keep their money. Some go to silver, some go to gold, some people go to crypto, some people buy assets and land and property. So it's become a choice for people as an alternative way to keep their money safe and also to have a position in a different form of uh, asset that they didn't have access to before. So it's changed, whereas two, three years ago, we didn't have this much involvement from the public. Uh, and that makes it a bit more, a bit more uh, harder to make it fall or volatile um, aspect of it. So we're seeing adoption on, on large scales, like institutions coming and having a reserve in Bitcoin, which we didn't have before. Uh, and that's quite powerful. Bueno, básicamente lo que tú me dices es que es, 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 es el mercado, ¿no? es el mercado actual y que, que sí, Elon Musk eh, le dio un, gol, un golpe fuerte a la especulación de, 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 de las criptos porque pues, al final eh, él puso que se iban a poder comprar sus coches con, con criptomonedas, pero también él contamina mucho haciendo... Eh, los coches, ¿no? Entonces es como algo muy complejo, ¿no? Y el mercado es complejo, ¿no? Eh, y, y, y es parte de, de toda esta posmodernidad, ¿no? Las noticias falsas. Entonces hay como muchos intereses de por medio. Es lo que yo entendí con, con tu respuesta, ¿no? Básicamente. Eh, I mean, eh, What do you feel is the is the is the next future for the from the cryptos? What yeah. do you think is the, the next future? Is the is the, the, the immediate future for the for the cryptos? Do you feel with this with these uh, values, with this sensation, do you feel they will be going up? Or what the speculation will win? Uh, I will ask to you. If, no, I don't know if you have sons. You have sons? Uh, daughters? Sons? Oh, no, daughters? No, 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 no. You have done have sons, daughters. Do you invest all the education money in the future in cryptos, in, in crypto money? In, uh, for your education of the future of your sons, of your daughters? I don't know. It's a question I, I, I will ask to you. I, I don't know. <laughs> You're no, not. No. I, I know. Claro que no. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a father of family, you know? 
say. What do you feel? No. Uh, you are talking with uh, Almero Simpson. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I yeah. Met, I'm a common guy, you know? No. I'm a common guy and it's really, it's, it's an, a natural question. It's a natural question from a common guy, you know? Yeah. I want to ask to you, yeah, I expect from you a real answer, please. Yeah. Look, that not answer... A comer, not a commercial answer. A real... <laughs> and, 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 and a real answer, please. Totally. Okay. So, with the money that you put into it, I would see it as an opportunity to be involved with something that there's still a lot of fear around. When there's fear involved, there's opportunity because a lot of people don't want to enter it. What you'll see in this market is when the prices are high and everyone's excited and every news you read is really positive about crypto, that's probably when you should sell. When everyone's talking about it, that's probably when you should sell. Right now, no one wants to talk about it. They're like, we're in a bear market. Everything's bad. Who knows when it's going to go up? Maybe now is a good opportunity because no one's talking about it. No one's excited about it. At the same time, you're talking about, you know, the, the money from your future sons or daughters. No, I wouldn't do that. What I would look at it as instead is if you were going to put some money away to give to them when they're older, maybe put a portion of it um, in cryptos. You know, you have to have that understanding that it can fall. But if you're not going to touch that money for a very long time and you're okay to just relax and watch the market go up and down for the next five years and then decide when you want to get out, then you're good. But if that money you're putting in, like in six months time, I need it to double. Otherwise, you know, everything's going to be bad. Then don't touch it because it's money that you need and you're dependent on and therefore you're gambling at that stage and that's not healthy. Again, this is just my experience. You know, you should speak to a financial advisor if you want. But my, my experience has taught me that you just put in what you're okay to not touch until you see the opportunity where you can exit. And when you see the opportunity to exit, probably do it because everything works in cycles, right? Um, life is the same after the night, it's day, you know, after the rain, it could be sunny, you know, we just have cycles and everything and just know when to get out and when to come in is a good opportunity and just put money in that you're not going to be like stressing about and you're not going to be panicking if the market goes down, you know, your sanity and things are important as well. So that would be my advice. And, uh, and it's important to have it. So at the end of the day, I'm not saying don't enter. It's, you know, I used to tell people five years ago, every family should have one Bitcoin. And back then, five years ago, it was worth probably like, I don't know, $2,000 or something, two, two or $3,000. And everyone was like, oh, what's one Bitcoin going to do? Well, that $2,000 became $60,000. So a lot of people contacted me and they're like, wow, I remember when you told me every family should have one. It's just a tool. Cryptos are just like a tool. It's like, you know, when you open up your toolbox, you might have a hammer, a screwdriver, and a saw. Um, as a person in technology, you might have a webcam, a backup hard drive. You might back up stuff to the cloud. It's a tool. So the same way that you create backups of things onto the cloud or physical hard drives, you want to do the same with your money, which is, okay, we have our dollar, our pesos, our euros, but let's also have a little bit in crypto in case that goes somewhere and maybe a bit in Bitcoin, maybe a bit in whatever other crypto that you look at it. And that tool is very important to have, uh, I believe. And just to tell you, um, just to add to this, where is it going? Right now, you're seeing a lot of uh, central, uh, central bank uh, digital currencies. And these central bank digital currencies are very different to what I'm talking about. So central bank issued digital currencies, which is what Mexico is doing, US is doing, Australia is doing, a lot of countries around the world are doing this. They are centralized. They don't have any of these benefits that I spoke about earlier. They're actually very dangerous because a centralized a digital currency is, means that everything you do can be tracked. Everything that you do can be uh, monitored and you can be like, well, I purchased something that 
had a carbon rating of, you know, a high carbon rating, so you might lose points. Um, you know, it's a very different thing to digital currencies that are decentralized. And that's what's happening now. So we're seeing a lot of countries launching their own centralized digital currencies. And I just want people to be aware they're very different to decentralized cryptocurrencies. You don't answer my question. You invest all your <laughs> money of your sons in crypto money of the education of, of the education found of your sons in crypto? No. 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 Maybe half. <laughs> Maybe. 50%. Yeah, I mean, thanks a lot for all your support, really. Where yeah. we can find you? Can you give of me course. your, um, your uh, email? Uh, where, where we can find you for uh, advices, for more information? Uh, if, we can, if we want to have uh, courses about cryptos, please uh, tell me where we can find you. Yeah, absolutely. Can I do a quick screen share? Yeah, sure. So I'll we, just show we you. We have uh, five minutes. Okay. Minutes. That's plenty of time. I just need to be able to screen share if it's okay. Sure. Whole minute. Whole minute. Beautiful. Right, thank you. So this is Bitopia. Uh, you can go to bitopia.org and uh, you can get access to this uh, particular website uh, where you can enroll. So our courses are launching in July. So there's uh, two that are particularly re relevant. Uh, reclaim your digital privacy would be for business owners or individuals that really care about the digital uh, security and privacy and learn how they can uh, you know, take advantage of that. But the crypto one in particular, which is what we're dealing with today, it's a two week course. The first week we go over the theories, uh, you know, what is the financial system based on, how is it different to uh, cryptos, and then we dive into deeper, how to buy cryptos, how to keep them secure. Uh, where you can trade them, uh, the security aspect of it, the keeping them you know, secure because a lot of people do lose their cryptos. Uh, what's the difference between centralized exchanges and keeping it on your own wallet? What is a hardware wallet? So it's quite a uh, you know, thorough course and it gives people beginners for sure, uh, you know, an understanding of how that works. And then the second week of the course is, uh, I go through it with you and make sure you apply the knowledge uh, and you, uh, you know, have certain exercises to do where you apply them. Uh, moreover, this same course uh, we've done for executives as well. So if there's people and company owners or managers out there uh, who want their staff or their company uh, team members to learn more about this and how it would, you know, impacts their business or the way the world is going, uh, we also do uh, private courses where, you know, we can uh, go and visit you where you are. We organize an event uh, in Mexico and you come down with your team and you can learn a lot more about these things as well. And uh, that's particularly how we do it. If you want to keep in touch with what we're doing, um, you can find us on Telegram as well, uh, Bitopia University. And, uh, you know, there we post a set of news about these topics as well. So that's how you can find uh, our project and what we're doing. And uh, as well, you can get in touch uh, for your own needs too. Uh, you're muted, sorry. Uh, Paco, you're mute. Excellent. Now we know uh, we, we, where we can find you and thanks a, a lot for your content. And so uh, we, we can find you. Thanks a lot for all your support. Uh, Adiós a todos. De Informa BTL, despídete en español. Ya, eh, Jamín. Gracias algo, por la oportunidad. Algunas palabras en mexicano, díselas. Jamín. Sí. Con groserías o algo. Alguna palabra en mexicano. <laughs> que te sepa. <laughs>
Algo en mexicano. Despídete para la audiencia de Informa BTL de Menta 2.0. Despídete sí, en, 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 en español. Diles algo en español, en mexicano, a los que nos escuchan. <risa> ah. <risa> Adiós o diles algo. ¿Eh? Eh, Jamín, diles algo en español, en mexicano, alguna palabra en español que a la gente le encanta escuchar las palabras. Ah, sí. Uh, gracias para la oportunidad. Uh, como el... Tequila, mezcal. Ah, <risa> mezcalita. <risa> gracias, hasta luego. Hasta luego, gracias. <risa>